Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's another experimental homebrew session today where I'm going to attempt to make some apple mead. So tonight's ingredients are as follows. A jar of clear honey, a tin of golden syrup, two jars of homemade applesauce and a large pan of Leeds tap water. Now I never use tap water do I? I always use spring water as you will know. But I've been told that if you put your uh, tap water in a pan and leave it overnight that it should be okay, it should get rid of the chlorineiness. Now the, this is the why I don't use tap water usually because it's quite chlorine -y. And I must admit I've smelt it and the chlorine smell seems to have gone so I'm going to go with it as an experiment and see what happens. The worst thing that will happen is it won't taste as good as it could. So let's get it on. So I need to get this boiling. So I've measured this at just under a demijohn. Now the applesauce that I'm using is very clearly homemade in a Marmite uh, jar. But this applesauce has just got apples and sugar in it, nothing else. It's made from apples from my own garden. So I'm risking this as being okay for making wine with. It's essentially just pure apple puree with sugar. So in goes the applesauce. And I'm just going to literally spoon it in, let it sink to the bottom and as the water heats it will dissolve so the whole jar can plop in there. And then in goes the second jar of applesauce too. Now you can see that this is red. These were actually sweet eating apples. So this should make a nice sweet apple flavoured mead hopefully. So there's the applesauce in the bottom of the pan. It will dissolve as the water heats up. So next I'm adding the honey and I'm doing it through a sieve so I can just leave the jar to sit on top. As it heats up it will melt it and come out easier. So next up is the golden syrup and this should give it some really good sweet toffee flavours. And if you've ever poured golden syrup, you'll know it just goes on and on and on and on. Now this all needs a good stir. What I don't want is it sticking to the bottom. And I can already feel how buoyant the water is. With all that dissolved sugar going on in there. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off. Now I'm going to leave this to cool. Okay, the liquid has cooled a little bit, not fully, but enough for me to pour it into the demijohn. It's still too hot to add the yeast though, or to take the gravity. Okay, so I've got it in the demijohn and I've put the airlock in. It's too hot to do anything with overnight tonight, so I'm just going to leave it until the morning and I'll pick it up then. Okay, so it's the next morning and this is how my liquid has settled. But look in the bottom how it's got like a mound of sediment. And this is just the honey, the golden syrup and the apple sauce. So it, I think that that looks like there must be some crystallised sugar in that sediment at the bottom. So I need to take the gravity of this, but before I do that, I'm going to mix it around a little. That's better. Okay, I need to get this into my uh, measuring funnel. And then I get my little device in to measure the gravity. Here it goes. That looks quite buoyant. So that is an original gravity of 1066. So this is looking like it could be a potent brew. And I like that. 
So I need to get my yeast in now and I'm using Lalvin Champagne Sparkling Wine and Cider Yeast. This will activate quickly. There's probably just over a teaspoon gone in there. And I just need to aerate this a little bit, mix it in. It will activate. This will actually activate in seconds, if not minutes. Okay, I'm trying to work out what's going on with this. You might see I've changed the airlock, because I thought there might be a leak. But it's just barely doing anything. And when you look at it, there's no bubbles. You can sort of see the bits of yeast, the little white dots. But there's no life in it. So I don't know whether the yeast has passed its best or what. The airlock is going and that's because this is warm because it's been near the fire so the pressure is higher inside than out. But it's barely going. So anyway, I've decided, I've run out of champagne yeast so I'm going to put some Belgian ale yeast in it and we'll see if that makes any difference. It's just a big experimentation. Okay, so I'm going to get the lid off. So this is Cross My Loof Belgian Ale Yeast. And a book, put a bit of this in. Okay, there's about a teaspoon gone in there. So I'm just going to agitate this so it mixes in. So let's get this back in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on time lapse and we'll see what happens. So I think it's safe to say the beer yeast has worked and it's all activated now. This is what I was looking for before. So I'm happy now this is working. The experiment looks like it's going to go on. So I'll catch you next time, whenever that may be. Good morning folks from the kitchen. Just a quick update with my apple mead. Today I'm going to be straining off the wine from the fruit matter putting it into this demijohn and then back into this one which I'll have cleaned out as well because now it's been going for a month I want to start to get to the end of the fermentation process. So it's bung out, siphoning tube in and now the fun bit. I've got a filter in my funnel which means it should catch any of the uh, fruit debris of which there's quite a lot in this demijohn. It's reasonably clear, you can see the tube pretty well. And you can see there's a lot of matter coming through, but the sieve is working. And there we go, the bubbles in the siphoning tube indicate the end of the siphoning. So that's what's left in the bottom of the demijohn. I'm going to throw that away. And as you can see just here, the sieve has done its job. And I've got a nice amount of wine, which I'm going to leave in the demijohn now for a few more days. I've cleaned the demijohn out, and now I'm going to transfer this back in there. So I'm going to put the airlock back in and I'm now just going to leave this now for another week and see what happens. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. Today I'm going to be adding finings to clear my apple mead. So you can see it's just there. It's been a week since I took the pulp away from it. The fermentation has gone to less than one bubble per minute so it's now time to clear it. I'm using Clear It Wine Finings by Young's to do this and it comes in two stages, an A and a B. So I'm going to pour some of this through the funnel into this plastic vessel. I'm looking for around about a teaspoon equivalent. So then it's bung out and I'm just going to pour this now into the funnel. So 
So I've got Finings and I've got Mead in here. I just need to give it a little bit of a mix around. I want it all to mix nicely. Right, what I'm going to do now is leave this for an hour. This is a two-step process and after an hour I will add Finings B into this. Okay, it's been an hour so I'm now going to add Finings B. So you can see in the damage on it does look pretty clear there's not any sediment at the bottom from the findings there so i'm just going to pour this straight back in now into the original damage on where findings b is so here it is and i'm just going to give it a little swizz around okay so now i'm going to put the airlock back in And I'm just going to leave this now for three or four days and see if I get any sediment in the bottom and if it gets clearer in the top. Uh, and whether it does or doesn't, I'll be bottling it after that point. So I'll see you then. Good morning from the kitchen, folks. Today I'm going to be bottling my apple mead. So it's been left for a week after I cleared it. I've had it outside to cool down as well to make sure that any bits of yeast that were left floating around have sank to the bottom. A little bit of a nature's way of cold crashing. There's no fermentation activity. It's all in the bottom now, the uh, the gunk, the trub, whatever we want to call it, the sediment. And now I'm going to bottle. So it's bung out. Siphoning tube in, ensuring not to hit the sediment. And now the fun bit. I'm going to fill my hydrometer flask first so I can take the final gravity and then onto the bottles. So I'm hoping to get four bottles out of this. If I'm very lucky I'll get five but it's probably going to be four. I'm just trying to keep above the sediment. I've got a chance of getting a fifth bottle here. Might have a little bit of sediment in this one. And there we go, the bubbles in the pipe indicate that this process is over. And in fact, I have managed to get five bottles, so that's a success. I need to take the final gravity, so in goes the hydrometer. And that has sunk very nicely, indicating quite a strong end brew. And that's the final gravity of 0.998. So it's time to work out the alcohol percentage using the original gravity, which was 1.066. From that, I minus the final gravity, which is 0.998. 998 and that gives me a figure of 0 0.068 which I multiply by 131.25 equals a final alcohol by volume of 8.9%. Let's just say 9% because after that's finished fermenting in the bottle with the secondary fermentation that's going to go up a bit. So that's a whopper, that's great news. Thumbs up from me. Here's my five green bottles standing on my sink. Into each bottle goes three carbonation drops. These carbonation drops are like specialist sugar cubes which should begin a secondary fermentation within the bottle which ultimately, fingers crossed, will make these into a sparkling mead. But only time will tell. Now, by rights, I should have put these in before I siphoned the wine in. I don't know what the actual reason for that is. Something to do with science, but that's what you're meant to do. So just a note on the carbonation drops, it's one per 250 ml, which is why I've put three in these bottles, because they're 750 ml bottles. Next, it's time to put the bungs in. So I'm using plastic bungs, which I've had softening in very hot water. 
If you don't soften them, they can be quite difficult to get in. And it also gives them a final rinse, which is not a bad thing. So I shake them dry, get it on top of the bottle, and then it's brute force. Push. One. Ow. I don't know if you can see that mark on my hand, but that represents pain. No pain, no gain, so that's how it is. Bungs are in place, and now the cages. These are not for vanity. These actually do prevent the uh, bungs from flying off most of the time. And therefore, it's good to use them. I'm using recycled cages from bottles that we've had. But you can actually buy them online. I've just had to buy a pack of them online because I'm nearly running out of what I've got and I'm brewing more than what I've got equipment for, which is a good thing, I guess. It means that this summer should be fun. So that's all my bottles filled, bunged and caged, and now I'm just going to give them a rinse to get any sticky residue off. So there's just one more job now, and that's to print the labels out. So here's my bottles on the sink, all labelled. I now need to put these somewhere which is quite warm for a couple of weeks to reawaken the yeast and get that secondary fermentation going. And that will be ultimately what gives it some sparkle. So the next film will be the opening and the sampling and that'll be in about two weeks time. So see you then. Evening from the kitchen folks, it's opening and sampling time for my apple mead. Or is it a sizer or a melamel? I'm not quite sure. It's one of them anyway. It's turned out at 9% and it's now been 16 days since I bottled it. So it's time to sample it. It's been somewhere warm for the last few days. Hopefully there's going to be a bit of a fizz. So I'm having some difficulty getting this one out, but I'm getting there now. Hmm. Very small. Not hugely encouraging, but let's have a look how it pours. Mild sparkle, very mild. There's definitely effervescence and bubbles in there, but it's nothing to write home about. Huge apple bouquet. Nice, actually, very nice. I'd say it's a medium dry. None of the uh, honey comes through whatsoever, but certainly it's appley. It's very appley. There's definitely some bubbles in the mouth. When you've got it in your mouth, you can feel the effervescence, but it's certainly not a big gassy thing like some of them are, like this one is at the minute. Anyway, it's a success of sorts. I'm happy enough with it, and it's certainly going to be nice on a a very hot end of March day as it currently is outside, it's 20 odd degrees, so happy enough with that. So cheers folks, and I'll be back with my next brew soon. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. 
and if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography as well as some stories then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.